Hi everybody, I'm Angela Fair and I'm in my studio today and before I get started, I'm, today I want to work on some online courses, but before I get started I want to do a little warming up just to painting for myself because I had a crazy idea that's going to probably take all day for me to just try out and implement. Um, right now what you see before you is just a piece of my Arches rough watercolor paper and I have a little few pencil lines on it to kind of show me the direction I want my painting to move. And so right now I'm going to just work with doing a very pale wash kind of around my major focal point in my painting. And that's a little different than I often work. So um, bear with me, my cell phone uh, camera doesn't take, fill quite as much of my painting area, take it all in, so we're going to have to be improvising a little bit. And just to, I'm going to have to really pay attention to make sure we can capture what's happening on my painting. And uh, throughout the day I'm going to be working on my online courses and I want to share kind of a little bit of my process as I go through the day. So stay tuned as I, as I come on and off of Facebook Live here uh, throughout the day. Um, and right now in this little idea that I have uh, involves layering paint starting with a very fluid wash and then I'm going to do some adding and subtracting of color as I paint. So right now I want to keep things very light and um, just kind of uh, give my painting a, a basis, a background for what's going to happen later on. And actually I think I'm going to turn my whole board around right now because I almost feel like this looks better going this direction. Uh, so uh, right now I'm just adding some moon glow and cobalt teal and that's kind of all I have in mind right now for this warm-up um, for this crazy idea is a basic color scheme uh, which is of violets and turquoise and uh, a basic shape which is that little pencil sketch that I've kind of created and I'm really wanting to keep things kind of loose so that I can uh, kind of react to what's happening as it happens on the paper. And whenever I start a painting, I try to do that. I try to keep things very open-ended so that um, I can change my plan as I see possibilities begin to emerge. A little more cobalt teal up here. Um, let's see here. I love this line that's happening on this side right here. That's just re really beautiful. Once this little warm up is done, and I actually I'm not going to do too much more to it, uh, just playing with these two colors and giving them lots of room to flow. And once that's done, I'm going to set all this aside, set my camera, my other camera up, and start working on some course content for the upcoming courses that I have planned. What I want to do this year, my goal was to rebuild my free course that a lot of you um, met me through. And uh, so that's going to change and uh, be revamped and you'll be certainly welcome to join it again, uh, whether you've purchased my courses or not. And then my other plan is to uh, create a watercolor masterclass, which will be a six week program uh, with content being new content being added each week um, focused on helping you move towards mastery in your watercolor so I'm really excited about both of those courses and just doing something a little bit deeper than I have done in the past so right now I'm going to just unclip my camera so that I can zoom out a little bit and so you can see where I'm at with this painting so and I'm really wobbly aren't I so you can see right now the um, the entire painting, it's about 13 inches square, and um, I left that white space in the middle, beautiful flowing cobalt teal and moon glow, and I'm going to let it dry completely, and once it's completely dry, I have a really uh, crazy awesome thing I'm going to do, and that'll probably be in about an hour or two once it's solidly dry. You can watch me work on the next phase. I'm ready to add the second layer to this color washed floral my crazy idea that I that I uh, started this morning and uh, I'm going to use some gouache at this time and gouache is a uh, opaque watercolor and 
so it goes so I almost never use it sorry I had to use my teeth to open the lid um, I almost never use it until I saw a technique by John Lovett in a recent edition of International Artist magazine and he was using gouache uh, for a really a beautiful um, ink and wash technique over watercolor and so I'm I, I tried it out on a couple of paintings I think it's really cool and I want to adapt it to my loose floral technique so I've got some gouache I've got a little bit in this bowl that's dried from a previous painting session and I've got some fresh gouache too so um, gouache doesn't re-wet quite as nicely as transparent watercolor and I want a fairly thick layer here so I'm just uh, preferring to use the fresh and I'm going to go right over those flowers that I sketched very loosely I don't know if you could tell they were flowers I knew what they were <laughs> and that's what matters that the artist knows at this stage and so I'm just gonna spread some gouache fairly thickly I want a few little holes but I'm just gonna move it right across my area that I want to keep light because after the gouache has dried I'm gonna wash it with some ink and I think I'm going to have to start buying bigger tubes of gouache because this does use a lot of white gouache in a hurry. I'm squeezing more out already. So now I've got a much bigger blob in my bowl. Uh, I'm trying not to thin it too much because I want it to serve as almost like a mask. And, and that's basically what I'm going to be using the gouache as, is as a removable mask. Uh, it's going to cover my paper at this time, and I'm going to wash it away once it's dried. And uh, so I'm excited to share what that does in my painting. I'm going to go over some of the original wash that I did as well. And because I'm still kind of learning this technique, I've only done it a couple of times, uh, it'll take some time before I really know how thick to put the gouache on, if there's a difference between the thick and thin layers, how much I can water it down and so forth. So it's just going to take some time to get to know. Uh, if you have access to that in International Artist Magazine, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's always got great tutorials and I love learning other artists' techniques. I've been looking at John Lovett's paintings for a while and wondering how he would got some of the effects he was getting and so the fact that he was willing to share his technique in the magazine uh, was really exciting and I don't ever like to feel like I'm stealing techniques or copying someone I'd much rather take um, techniques that I've heard about and uh, adapt them to fit my own personal style And I think I'm going to change brushes now and do a little bit of finer line as well before I consider this a pro, uh, thoroughly masked. And because gouache is a watercolor, I can use my watercolor brushes. I don't need to feel like I'm going to wreck a brush like you might if you were trying to use uh, acrylic paint or something. Generally, if you're, you don't switch brushes between acrylic and watercolor or oils and watercolor. Really a bad idea. And uh, I tried this, I tried this technique with watercolor ground and that was not a good idea. The watercolor ground I had was not removable. So I'm trying, I'm learning a whole new technique with that painting because when I thought, oh I've got this big tub of watercolor ground and that will work really well. Uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't wash off. And for this technique to work, you need to be able to wash off your gouache. Whenever I work with thicker paint like this, I'm reminded of why I love watercolor so much. I just don't find it nearly as fun to use. And thank you for joining me. This is really fun to be able to share this with you. Um, it's a little bit crazy. I don't feel like I'm teaching right now because I'm just kind of sharing my crazy idea and uh, looking forward to what's going to happen. And, you know, when I started out, 
before I ever started teaching watercolor online, uh, this was what I did. I, had, I would have this crazy genius idea or some kind of watercolor light bulb moment and I would video it for YouTube. And uh, it was because of the people who responded to what I shared on YouTube, um, the response I got from the little nuggets of inspiration that I had, that I was motivated to learn how to teach online. And I appreciate everyone who has followed me and joined in my live broadcasts on YouTube. Uh, I usually teach online at, on YouTube every, when, uh, every Tuesday and has taken the time to take an online course. Uh, it's really, uh, so, teaching is something I love and I never would have thought that I would be a teacher of anything. It wasn't on my radar ever. And I just kind of fell into it. I'm just spattering a little gouache. I think I'm just about done here. So right now it feels like I've covered up my beautiful first wash that I did, and it's, but it's still there. And the good news is the gouache will wash away, and uh, once it's completely dry, uh, I'm going to cover it with some ink, and I'm going to show you that in my next phase, which will probably be an hour, uh, hour and a half from now. Uh, once it's thoroughly dry, I'm going to wash some color over it. It's going to serve as my mask. And then once that's dry, we take the gouache off. So it's a little bit of a process, a little bit time consuming. And you're watching it in real time, which means you're just like me. You have to wait for it to dry for the next stage to be to happen. And uh, yeah, this is for those who are just joining me. I just masked my first wash of this painting with a white gouache, almost out of my Winsor and Newton gouache. And uh, once the gouache is dry, I'm going to use it as a mask for the painting and uh, see if we can reveal some real beautiful uh, watercolor moments. Okay, I'm back and I have now let my gouache uh, layer dry, so it's completely dry and it's just kind of a chalky white over top of my painting. And um, now that it's dry, I'm going to use it as a mask by adding some ink. And I have these Liquitex inks that I just recently bought. I haven't even tried the colors out. Um, Muted Turquoise and Muted Grey. I think they're going to be really beautiful added to my painting. And the deal with the Liquitex ink is this is an acrylic ink. Uh, very fluid. And um, I'm trying to figure out, it doesn't, it says it's transparent, so that means it's going to have kind of a watercolor effect, but it's also going to, unlike watercolor, be permanent on my paper. So as I paint it on here, anywhere that it is not touching the gouache, it should soak into the paper. The gouache, however, should provide a barrier so that when I rinse the gouache away, I'll also remove the ink in that spot. So let's give it a try. And I've actually put a couple droplets on a piece of paper so you can see what it looks like. They're absolutely beautiful. And I would say that gray is really more of a violet. In fact, it's very close in hue to the moon glow, which I painted in my first layer. So you can see now a little bit of my plan coming through, knowing that my gray was kind of that violety color. And um, I don't want to put these, I'm not going to put them in my palette today. I could have a little plate or something, but I'm actually going to just drip a bit of that ink right onto this scrap piece of paper and use that as a palette. Just a couple of drops and I can pick it up with my brush. And I'm going to use it quite juicy like watercolor and I'm just going to start painting it right on as though I was working with watercolor. Now because the gouache is watercolor, that means anywhere that I spend a lot of time brushing against it, uh, it's very possible that I could be lifting the gouache. You can see how the gray gets kind of cloudy as it starts to lift the gouache. So the, the gray is actually going to soak through a little bit and, uh, and yet be resisted as well. And I'm really going to tilt here. That's why my board just shifted. And I'm going to try to work quickly here as well. Diluting my ink to let it flow. I just lost one of the clips that's holding my paper to the to the board. That's kind of funny. And I just drop droppered a few drops of ink right onto my paper as well. And there's a lot of uh, not a lot of control happening here. A lot of spontaneity that's going to take place. I'm not going to have a lot of say over what these colors do. So there's some risk there, but I think it's going to be worth it. Um, sprinkling on a little bit of the turquoise and letting it flow. 
it goes on really dark, but as soon as I start to dilute it, I start to see the turquoise. That's gorgeous. And so the trick here, I think, I'm not wanting to lift the gouache. I want to just lightly rinse over with my inks. And I'm just going to keep adding ink and flowing things across the paper. I'm going to use my little paper palette even to sprinkle some color on. I might play with that after it's after I'm done using it as well. Why not? So there's a little bit of backwards thinking here. I think anytime you're working with masks and resists, you have to remember that what uh, the mask is covering is going to look completely different once that mask is lifted off. And uh, so that means some of the areas in my painting that are quite dark now, once I rinse away the gouache, they should go back to being quite pale. And unlike uh, traditional masking fluid, which is uh, pretty flawless in preventing color from leaking through, this gouache is going to be kind of a leaky mask. It's going, it's going to have color seeping through. It's going to have places where the mask has lifted and created texture. And it's going to be really fascinating to see how that all goes down. I'm pretty much ready to stop here, I think. Just looking for a few more places where I can maybe add some water to get things moving. And I'm getting so much gorgeous texture, it's going to be a lot of fun to see what emerges. Um, there's uh, adding paint, and then our next step is going to be taking it away. Um, and the colors are gorgeous. This Liquitex ink, I bought it because of the color. Uh, when I saw that they had these muted... The muted turquoise and the muted gray, the colors looked so gorgeous to me that I thought they'd work really well with uh, the kind of painting, the style of painting that I love to do, and using this technique with the gouache. So right now, um, look at all the gorgeous texture in that. It's going to be, it's almost going to feel like a, I'm going to be losing something to wash, wash away uh, the layer of gouache that I've painted in between my first layer of watercolor and this layer of ink but I think we're gonna see some really magical things kind of emerge out of it you can already see like the gouache as we've added the moist ink the gouache softens and you can see it kind of shining through uh, and that means there's gonna be some ink leaking through into the painting uh, onto the paper as well and I can't wait to show you what it looks like looks like after I've rinsed it away so what's gonna happen now is I'm going to let everything dry again. This is a very, uh, t it's a time consuming process and I could see doing this sort of thing with maybe three or four paintings on the go rather than just one so that, um, you know, I, I don't just spend my whole day going back and forth between layers of one painting. As this has, once this is completely dried, I'm going to take it to the bathroom and I'm going to put it under the shower and just uh, gently wash away the gouache and I'll probably need to use uh, a toothbrush. I have my my trusty Angry Birds toothbrush which I will bring with me and I'm just gonna carefully brush away the gouache. Some of the watercolor from our first layer will lift away as well but because the ink is acrylic anywhere it's not um, barred from connecting with the paper uh, by the gouache, it's going to be, it's going to stay. So we're going to have this very interesting uh, give and take between the areas that wash away and the areas that stayed permanently. And I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of magic is going to emerge when I rinse away uh, what I've just put down. Well, I've washed off my gouache. That almost feels like a rhyme. And I... 
I think for those of you who are loving the rich colors I poured on here, you're probably missing them a little bit. This gives this whitewashed look because now that the gouache has been removed, we're seeing, we're back again to our original paper, anywhere I painted the gouache. Where the gouache was dissolved, we're also seeing this granular effect, which I think is really interesting. It's like it's like a whitewashed effect, and I and I kind of love the feeling of it. The other thing is acrylic ink doesn't although it mixes beautifully and has some watercolor effects to it when you let it flow in a wet wash it also does this thing where it as it um, dries if it's moist a little bit it kind of crackles it granulates in in uh, this interesting way that is unlike watercolor so it's a different kind of texture that you get because you're using acrylic ink and um I'm back to almost, it feels like the beginning stages of a painting. And so I'm not really almost done. I know this is going to be my final stage that I'm going to share with you today. And I'm probably not going to finish this painting. I don't feel like it's going to be done at this point. Although I want, my, my goal is to have a painting that's fairly light in value um, and has a lot of white showing. Uh, but right now I'm just going to try to work to kind of uh, build and enhance on what was created in my in my original wash. I'm going to go back to my um, moon glow and teal, my original colors that I started with, and I'm going to create some, some pretty soft effects and some crisp lines, starting to think about detail and uh, defining shapes in my painting. So uh, what I'd really like to do is I have this big gallery wrapped um, watercolor paper. It's wrapped on canvas stretcher bars and it's about 30 by 40 inches and I've been wanting to paint something on it for my home uh, to put in to, to decorate my bedroom and so I'm really thinking that this is kind of prep for thinking about what I want to do for that big art piece in my in my room and it's a little bit intimidating to have a piece of paper um, that large to work on because as watercolorists most of the time we are painting in uh, in no larger than a full sheet which is 22 by 30 inches watercolor artists don't usually measure their paintings by feet and uh, and yet I'm, I'm excited to consider doing it and I think I just need to take the plunge and uh, and risk wrecking a piece of paper and the bigger the paper is the bigger the risk feels so that's kind of what's holding me back at this point so I'm just taking my moon glow and creating some shapes and I want to see flowers in this and I, I really love the unexpectedness of working with that original wash of gouache and adding the ink and rinsing everything away you, you give up some control in doing that and actually I think it's really good for us watercolor artists to give up control uh, it's a reminder that of the beautiful magic that can happen when we let watercolor do its thing. And I, all, I often say that I'm collaborating with the watercolor rather than trying to control it. Uh, because I've been doing this for so long, I have a good sense of what's going to happen when I start painting. I do have a lot of, a lot of options for kind of manipulating what's happening on my painting, but I also love giving the fluidity the freedom to to flow the freedom to have to do its thing as well and i'll just react and respond to it uh, i i love this little shape right here it's a little bit of a flower flower head in fact i think it would look a little bit more complete if i just add a little bit of darks right here kind of echo what's happening up here And so much of the time when I'm painting, that's what I'm thinking of, is I'm thinking, this I like, I want to do more of it somewhere else. So sometimes when I make a mistake, I was teaching that in my, in my local class last night, telling my students, if you make a mistake that you don't feel like you can cover up for whatever reason, if it's stained into the paper, um, or just at a stage where you kind of pass the point where you could fix it, sometimes the, the way to fix it is to go big, to uh, emphasize it and make it seem like it's something you did deliberately. Uh, to go big or go home, right?
Um, I've actually just dipped into my cobalt violet. It's a good partner to the teal and the moon glow because it's a lovely soft violet um, that kind of works very much in the same color family. So although I'm adding a new color, there is no law that says I can, can't add a new color at this stage. I started with a, a wet and wet wash and then from there I went and added a layer of gouache uh, following the shape of my original design. And then from there I grabbed some ink, uh, acrylic ink, very fluid stuff, and put that over the gouache and then washed it away. It's a wonderful technique. I didn't invent it. I want to give credit to John Lovett, uh, who's an amazing mixed media and watercolor artist. And uh, thank him for sharing his technique, uh, I, which I saw first in International Artist Magazine. And I'm always looking for ways to apply other, um, other techniques, new techniques, to my watercolor paintings and find my own way to do them. So I haven't seen any florals of his done in this style, but I wanted to apply it to a floral style and see, see if I could create something that worked with my style. And uh, so I see two flower heads or centers right over here and here. And I think I see a little partial one over here too. So let's let that, I don't want to cover that little area actually. So I'm just going to frame it with a little bit of dark moon glow. The paint I'm using is Daniel Smith. Uh, moon glow, cobalt teal, and cobalt violet so far. Might add something new as if I have an inspiration. I'm gonna see a flower petal right along here too. And generally I don't paint a line that crisp without adding some water to let it move. And I'm actually gonna let it move into the flower here too by softening this edge. Adding a little color there. Love dotting in that color and letting it go poof. I've been working on two new courses for my online school at learn.angelafair.com. Uh, one is called Watercolor Pathways, and it's going to be a free course uh, aimed at strengthening your watercolor skills and just moving you along your watercolor journey. The other one is called Watercolor Mastery, and it's going to be a six-week course that, I want, that I'm planning to launch um, in the next month or so. Now I've actually committed to a date, so I'm uh, motivated. I should say motivated. I'm always motivated, but uh, it's always a challenge to try to get all my ideas implemented. I always have more ideas than time. And I think some line is going to be beautiful and interesting up here. So let's add some line. This stage of a painting is a dangerous stage because it's so easy to take a promising painting and ruin it and it happens to me just probably just almost as many times as it happens to you and so what I like to do is take my time I like to really engage with the painting and look for what the painting's saying needs to happen and part of that it's a little bit <laughs> I got to be careful that I don't spend too much time explaining what I'm doing because then I'm spending less time kind of engaging with it but I'm really just looking for what the painting needs and taking what's working in one area, applying it to another area. And uh, as soon as that kind of magic kind of turns off and I start feeling like I'm not sure what to do or like I'm painting out of some kind of um, panic to try to get everything to work, it, I know it's a good time to take a break and pull away not to paint past uh, past my plan and I really like this area here I like this dark pulling up in here um, I have this feeling of movement that I was looking for uh, I think I need to make this dark line move through the painting so it's happening up at the top but I need to pull it down to the bottom. So I'm going to put a little bit of a line here. And yeah, see how I just 
um, defined that edge of that flower. So now you really feel like the flower is turning to look at you. Because of the angle of the flower, I have wider petals here, narrow petals here. It's turning toward you. Um, and all these flowers are kind of turning in different directions. Not one is really looking at you face to face. Um, oh yeah, things are happening. I'm enjoying myself. Um, down here, I want to echo those dark lines. And I not really seeing it. I kind of feel like I have to see it in my mind's eye. That's that intuitive thing happening. So I'm going to just very faintly dot in a tiny bit of the moon glow here. And if a crisper line needs to happen, I'm going to wait till I can see it, until I can visualize it. And um, it's very possible that I might take my moon glow and do some of these intuitive lines over here. Um, on this side of the painting and over on this side of the painting. I only wish my phone could zoom out just a little bit more. Um, I also feel like what would be really nice would be to put some shadow flowers over on the edges of the paper. Really loving what's happening. Um, a couple of things I want to point out and then I'm going to wrap this up and just kind of let, let myself enjoy where I'm at right now while kind of getting a feel for what needs to happen next. Uh, again, I've used a very limited palette. The three colors of watercolor paint I used were Cobalt Teal, Moon Glow, and Cobalt Violet. And I really used very little of the Cobalt Violet. And then I paired it with the two colors of ink, the Muted Turquoise and the Muted Gray from Liquitex. And the Muted Gray really <laughs> looks to me like a purple, so thank you Liquitex for making your gray purple. And uh, so that really um, simple palette and then uh, makes my painting have this beautiful unity, a very calm feeling because they're kind of all in the, uh, in the cooler range of colors. So that gives a very tranquil painting. And um, I kind of would love to try it with some yellows and burgundies. I think that would be really fun. And um, the other thing I did was I really just kind of did one thing that I liked and then echoed it in different parts of the painting. We don't see my pencil lines that I started with and really all I did to start was I had my big kind of circular shape here and then some shapes kind of curving away from it. So I have that kind of cascade of flowers happening. I uh, love the movement that's happening in this painting and I'm really excited about seeing where it's going to go next. I'm going to just unclip my camera so I can zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And thank you for all your great comments. I look forward to reading them now. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. It always feels like a risk to wash away that ink and gouache, take away some of the beauty that was happening, but oh, we have so many pretty things that are going on in this painting. And I just can't wait to do more of them. So thanks for joining me. And uh, I will share the absolutely completed painting when it is finished. Thanks for watching.